Planet Dolan. The business of marketing is all about playing games with your mind to get you to buy something. It happens to you every single day, whether you realize it or not. Here are 10 of the ways businesses try to get one over on you. I'm Pringle the One, and today I'll be your narrator. Number 10. One of the primary ways businesses like to fool you is by making you think you're getting a good deal. It's about fooling you into seeing a big difference between the price of something and its actual value. If they can get you to see the value as being more than the price, then you're probably dancing in the palm of their hand. Department stores like to pull this trick by advertising sales and markdowns on their items except that the list price that they're marking down is absurdly high. If you see a pair of jeans that's 15% off and its normal price is $100, then you're paying $50 for it. That might feel like a great deal until you find out the normal retail price is $30. I feel like Ross does this, but I'm not too sure. I think Ross does give you a good deal, but I definitely know JCPenney and a lot of those department stores do that crap. Number 9. You may have noticed the rise of the mini can, particularly when it comes to soda. They cost a little less and you get a little less. It's marketed as a way to reduce serving sizes. Problem is, the smaller drinks are more expensive per ounce, and studies have shown that they're actually spurring people to buy more overall. So in this case, you pay more, you get less, and you end up buying more of them. I think it's also kind of one of those things where you see less of it and it's like, ooh, less sugar, but then you're like, oh, it's not that bad if I drink six of them. Number eight. This is one of the most subliminal methods companies use to get into your head, and it's one of the most difficult to catch. It has entirely to do with word and picture association. In one study, marketers were able to manipulate people's responses when shopping for cars with a simple page background. When the background was of money, people spent more time looking at the price. When the background had a flame design, people spent more time looking at the car's safety rating. Number 7. People always want what they can't have. Marketers play with this idea by putting the fear of missing out into your mind. If you've ever seen the last of something on a shelf or the words, only two left, when you're looking to buy something, you know what this feels like. It gives you something like a fight or flight instinct where you feel like you either need to buy it immediately or miss out on forever. But in reality, there are probably plenty more available than they're letting on. I definitely feel this way whenever I'm grocery shopping and they're like, only two left of the tofu. And I'm like, oh man, I gotta get that tofu and it's cheap. Number six. You probably already know that if you hear the words price starting at or as low as, then you're about to hear a price that's probably not what you'll pay. Those are words used when you're about to hear the lowest possible price something can be. You'll hear it on a lot of car commercials in reference to the cheapest car on the lot with stripped down features and every possible discount applied, including a bunch of discounts you don't qualify for. Seniors discount, veterans discount, young people's discount, Everything in between of a normal person, of a normal age, buying a car. Number five. The people who write terms and conditions agreements for the things you use, they know you're not going to read them. They're made long and confusing to prevent you from reading them. That's what companies like Blockbuster were banking on when they changed their terms and conditions in 2005 and started advertising no late fees on rentals. It's true that Blockbuster had stopped charging late fees. What they did instead is they started charging people the full purchase price of movies and games that were overdue. It wasn't a late fee. Technically, it was much worse. They were forcing people to buy them after a week. No wonder they're gone. I kind of missed them though. It was kind of cool going every other week to find a new movie, but definitely not worth it nowadays since we have the internet. Number four. This is a strategy unique to luxury and high-end brands. The sales people tend to treat you like crap. This is psychology at work. If you get brushed off by people in a luxury retail store like Gucci, it basically makes you feel like the door to some exclusive club is being slammed in your face. And the quickest and most emotional response to that feeling of exclusion and isolation is to earn the acceptance of that exclusive group, which means you gotta buy the expensive stuff. It feels good for a second, and by the time you realize it, so basically, snobby sales staff are the mean girls of the retail world, except that they're competent at their jobs. They're really good at their jobs, but man, they're scumbags to people in general. Number three. It's a simple ploy. You want to get the best deal, the best possible bang for your buck. The people trying to get you to buy stuff know that you're looking for that as well. Behavioral economist Dan Ayerly studied how The Economist magazine used this to their advantage. They had three subscriptions, a digital subscription for $59, a print subscription for $125, and a combined print and digital subscription also for $125. Ariel offered those three options to 100 students and found that most of them went for the print and online subscription because it seemed like the best deal. What? Okay, I don't know how, but okay. 
but then he took out the $125 print subscription and offered just a cheaper digital subscription and the combined one. Under those conditions, students overwhelmingly chose the digital-only subscription. In short, they never expected anyone to buy the digital-only subscription. It was a decoy. It was only there to make you think the combined subscription was a better value. Number 2 A big part of retail marketing has to do with manipulating your senses. Smell and touch are senses you might not even realize are being targeted. There is a reason why breakable goods are out of people to just touch at will. It's because holding something in your hand makes you feel attached to it, and that means you're more likely to pay for it. In fact, studies have shown that having physical contact with an object makes them more likely to pay more money for it than if they had only seen it from a distance or online. This is also the reason why car dealers will try to get you to sit in the car during the sales pitch. Oh man, I hate that about car dealers. Not gonna lie, I think I would be losing some humanity if I was taking that kind of job. Number one. It turns out your sense of touch is used in more ways than just your connection with a particular item. Studies have shown that if a female salesperson makes contact with a customer during a sales pitch, even if it's just a tap on the shoulder, that customer is more likely to spend money and more of it. And it doesn't matter if the customer is a male or female, but it has to be a woman making the sale. Men just don't have that magic touch. What? Thank you, Don. Did you know that we have a countdown book featuring some of our best scripts on sale now? Links down below for the physical and ebook versions. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.